Last but not least, you know, be your own boss. You know, we all are smart. We know what we're doing. We know what we're saying. We have to think independently and coherently. There are a lot of forces, just like major decisions we make in our life. You know, sometimes we say, oh, I don't want implants, but my significant other said, it's good for you, and I said, sure. Not good. Uh, it's your decision. You know, it's a big deal. Um, someone who gets them in their 20s, if you did not want them, the average lifespan on the chest is 10 years, some shorter, some longer. You want to be able to say to yourself, if I'm going to live up to 82, the average lifespan of an American woman, uh, you're going to get these theoretically exchanged five times in your lifetime, maybe twice, maybe three times, maybe nine times, I do not know. But the bottom line is, you want to make an informed decision, and if that's the decision you make, certainly go for it, because you're the boss. Uh, and then uh, that's pretty much it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and invite my very close friend, uh, Tracy, who I just met not too long ago, and she and I have talked and talked, and I said, you know what, I'll be very happy to have you if you want to come and talk and discuss, because what we want to do here is we want to increase awareness. We want people to talk and we want people to say, that is what I believe in. This is something that we cannot hide from. This is something we need to start talking and discussing so that we can give the relief to the women who very well and very much deserve and need it. Because sometimes, you know, when you're out of trouble, you know, things are good. But remember, when you were in trouble, like I have been and we all have been, and say, all right, what I can do to help someone so that I can make a big difference in not their life, but their husband, their kids, their work, their society in general. So uh, with having said that, I'm going to have Tracy, if you could please come in here. And I think all of us know who Tracy is. Uh, <laughs> Hi, thank you. I just want, I want to read something first because one of your patients messaged me on the way here mm -hmm. and said I could share this with everyone. Um, I won't say your name, but she said, I just lost it. Saw, she saw all her videos and pictures, which is very important. If you're gonna get your breast implants removed, you wanna find a doctor who is not afraid to show you pictures of the surgery and inside, like he's showing you up here, the picture inside your, your breast cavity to make sure everything was removed. Because a lot of doctors, like he's saying, will just yank them out and you will stay sick. And then all these plastic surgeons and all the doctors out there are saying, oh, BII doesn't exist. Well, it certainly exists. And, and it's because you didn't remove them properly. And these women stay sick. So she's saying, uh, it was a beautiful end block. So for the record, no drains. I didn't have drains either. Did you have drains, Annette? No. Uh, no seroma, no meds besides antibiotics. No need for meds likely due to a microsurgeon's ability. Very important to have a microsurgeon. I can't even stress the importance of having a microsurgeon. You don't want them poking and poking through to your lungs. And if they do, you, you, you need to be in capable hands because it happens. It does happen even with the best doctors. You need to be in really good hands. She didn't get a lift, didn't need a lift. All is good. I'll send my symptoms and relieved symptoms in another message. So that's, that's a patient I just met last week, I think it was, with Annette. And um, she's doing great. But my story was I got implants at 33 years old. Um, didn't know that, I thought they were lifetime. I was told I'd be put in the grave and your breasts will look great, you might look bad, but your breasts will always look like you're 20. And that wasn't the case. I had a rupture at, uh, 12 years later. They were saline. I had them removed with smooth saline. I had textured, which are the ones that are now causing cancer. And the cancer that he was just talking about is a man-made cancer only created by these implants. You need to know this. If you're thinking of getting implants or if you have them in, this cancer is only created by having implants. So I, I think we're taking time bombs. I, I understand some people don't react to them. I get it, I don't react to peanuts. 
So not everybody's gonna react. I have friends who have implants, they're not reacting to them. So I get it, they think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Some people are allergic, some aren't. Something happened, I don't do well with implants. So I had 50 symptoms, they all went away, almost immediately upon explant. Um, lower back pain, so debilitating, I thought I was gonna have to have surgery. My husband, who just walked in, would have to pull me out of bed with my son, this went on for 20 years, pull me out of bed screaming, screaming in pain, and then tell me to walk around because it would loosen up, and then all of a sudden he'd come in 10 minutes later after he took a shower, and he'd say, how's your back? Just fine. It would come and go just as fast, it would leave as fast as it came on. I had neck pain, I had elbow pain. The elbow pain went away the day of surgery. I was putting my hospital gown on, and thought, oh my gosh, these women that claim their, their joint pain goes away the day of surgery, I hope I'm one of them. I have not had that elbow pain since the day they took the implants out. I have not had migraines. I had migraine medication for 20 years. I had been put on ADD medication because I was losing my brain. I was becoming brain dead. And I flew in the chopper over Detroit for 15 years. And it was a tough job. And I was telling my husband the job I did. Then I had to do this, 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 this. I had 12 things I had to juggle at one time on the morning show. Now the afternoon was calmer, but the morning show I had 12 things to handle up in that chopper at one time. My brain got so bad I was missing cues. So he would ask me, what are you gonna cover? And I would tell him, oh, I'll cover this. 30 seconds, I'm not kidding, 30 seconds later, they would throw it to me, and I could be five miles over. So now I cover something else. So the people on the ground are like, oh my gosh, you're screwing everything up. It was, I was constantly screwing up. I was losing my brain. I couldn't even think anymore. So it, it doesn't just affect you physically, it affects you mentally. I don't know if it's all connected to the inflammation. I'm not sure. But I know I had 50 symptoms that went away, completely. I don't even get headaches anymore. I, I've taken Tylenol maybe once, and it might have been because I drank too much. And I'm not even getting hangovers. Like, I would get a hangover from one or two glasses of wine. A hangover, a full-blown hangover from one beer, two beers. I don't get anything anymore, nothing. I had food intolerances. I, I was pretty much eating vegan, and food intolerances, like you wouldn't believe, and now I eat everything. I can eat everything and I'm not reacting. So I was reacting to all kinds of foods. I wasn't metabolizing medications. Um, I couldn't take any medications. The back pain, they couldn't find anything. MRI, x-rays, they could never find anything wrong. My, bl my blood work would come back okay. It would show my hormones were all tanked. Now I'm on nothing. I was, I was on bioidentical hormone replacement. I was on thyroid medication. I am on nothing. I take nothing, nothing, and I'm fine. All my blood work now is fine. The only difference is the implants are gone. So I'm just telling you, if you have them in, or if you're thinking of getting them, or if you think you have some of the symptoms, they slowly kill us. I thought I was dying. I, I was, felt like I was being poisoned. So if you have any symptoms, be warned. And, and if you need a doctor, because somebody, <laughs> the person who grew up in the house that we live in, sent me your flyer. The kid that grew up in my house that we live in <laughs> sent a flyer. And I'm like, who's this guy? Saying he's an explant expert. And all of a sudden we get connected and we have an explant guy in Michigan who's not only explanting properly, because you can explant, you're not doing it properly. Most of them are not. There's a handful that are doing it properly, and this is one of them. And to come out publicly, publicly, and tell people that breast implant illness is real and to back us up is huge. And I really have to applaud you. I really do. At first I was like, who is this Dr. Khan? And now I, I totally have so much respect for you, I can't even tell you. So thank you very much, because it is real, and if you need a good explant doctor, 
I've been researching, and I do think you are the real deal, and I do think he's doing good explants. So thank you very much, and, and, and I can take questions if anybody has them.